Hey guys, Mike here at Anime Tutorials, and welcome back to a new video. All right, well today we're going to do a subscriber request. This one is fairly straightforward. Uh, I've been asked to create an oil drum, okay, to be used as a, a game prop. All right. So we're going to take a polygon cylinder. We're going to pull that out and pull that up until we roughly have the height that we want. We're going to set our translate values to zero to have it nice and centered, like so. We're going to go to our Poly Cylinder 1 tab. We're going to increase the subdivisions to 30 to make it nice and round. And we're going to set caps to 0. All right. Let's see. Yeah, that's fine. And then in height, we'll do three subdivisions. Good, good. And then we're going to select it. Right click and go to Edge. Double click on that edge. and shift or double click on that one and go to edit mesh and bevel and then pull down the fraction until they are very close together let's do 0 0.02 maybe a bit more 0 0.03 all right we're gonna zoom in we're gonna right click at a face click and double click shift click and shift double click so we have all of that selected, and we're going to go to Edit Mesh and Extrude, and pull out that thickness to 0 0.2. That's probably OK. We're going to right click at Object Mode, and we're going to hit 3 to test the smooth. Don't mind the top. We'll fix that. That looks OK. So hit 1 to go back. And then we're going to right click at a face, select this one, shift select that one, Go to Edit Mesh and Extrude. We're going to pull in the offset very, very slightly. That's about right. OK. And then we're going to push that in. So hit R. And just very slightly pull that in. So top and bottom. That's all right. Cool. Click away from that, then click that once again. Go to Edit Mesh and Extrude once more. And we're going to pull the offset all the way in until we have this small hole, or not hole, circle. And then we're going to hit W, and we're going to move that over here. Click away from that, select that face, and hit Delete. Okay. So that's all good. And we just want to uh, kind of create an opening for that thing. So what we'll do there is we'll take a uh, polygon pipe, give that a little height, hit Control A, make sure we're in object mode. We want some thickness on that. So let's do one, that's a bit much. 0 0.2, that's probably better. And then we'll right click on object mode once again. Let's do 30 subdivisions. Go to polypipe one and set the translate values to zero. So we can pull it up and then move it towards our circle here. Hit R to scale in. And from our top view, we're going to hit 4 for wireframe mode. So we can now move that towards where we want it. OK. That's not too bad. Just a bit more. OK. And the next step is we are going to take another polygon pipe. Pull that out. Give that some height. And in this case, we're going to go with six subdivisions. Actually, let's do eight. OK, we'll do eight. We'll do 0 0.2. That looks all right. We're going to set the translate values to 0. We're going to hit 4 for wireframe mode. Hit W to raise that up. Five for shaded mode. Let's bring that in and 
down, are the scale in, and then from our top view, hit W, and kind of scale that down. Let's see how close we are. That should be about right. And then we're going to hit F in our perspective view. Let's bring that down. And we don't want it to stick through the surface there. So we're going to hit R, bring that down a bit, and then hit W and bring it down like so. All right. OK. So that's our guy. We're going to drag select it. We're going to hit 3 to preview smooth it. Let's see what we get. OK, you can see that we need to reinforce those edges, right? So we're going to hit select it, hit 1 to go back. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to Insert Edge Loop Tool. There we go. And we'll do 1 there and 1 there and 1 out here, like so. And then we'll go to the bottom. And we'll do one there, one there, and one at the bottom, right here. Q on the keyboard. That one we're going to bring down a bit, like so. We're going to right click at a face, select that entire bottom row, and select that entire row. Edit Mesh, Extrude, uh, let's see, 0 0.02, a bit more, 0 0.05, that's better, okay. So that should fix that. Let's see, this guy doesn't need to be smooth at all. So where is our, there it is. Okay. So what I did here is I don't want to smooth this out because I want to have these corners. So I hit one to go back on that. This guy is fine. We don't need to smooth that either, but we do need to smooth this guy. So we're going to select this and we're going to go to mesh and smooth which should now look okay it's fine and then we're going to select everything and we're going to go to um, actually we're going to hit Control g to group it okay i'm going to go to windows outliner double click on my group and call it barrel there we go now this isn't very high poly so we can actually go with this for our game asset so with this group selected, I'm going to go up to File, and I'll export my selection. Hit my option box. I want to export it as an OBJ. And um, OK, let's uh, hit Export Selection. And then I have the option to export it to some location. So I'm going to go to my desktop, create a new folder. I'll call it Barrel. Double click on that. And we'll call this barrel obj and hit export selection okay next step we're going to import this into 3d code see you in a sec okay guys well we have 3d code open and what i want to do is i want to paint a uv mapped mesh now as you've seen i haven't uv'd anything right but i'm still going to select this and i'm going to click on my folder and i'm not going to select that i'm going to that's actually a dirty couch that I'm working on for a game scene. Uh, where did I put that? On my desktop. Barrel. There's my OBJ. Open that. And here I have the option to keep a UV. Well, I don't have any. So I'm going to go with auto mapping. Okay. And I got a 1K map size here. I'm going to hit OK. And there's my barrel. So I can move it around. And uh, let's see. Does that all look OK? Yeah does cool all right so i'm just going to go to uv 
and this is what I have right now. And I don't really have a lot of seams right here, so what I'm going to do is uh, clear seams. Okay. And we're going to go with uh, pack UV. That looks all right. I can live with that. And then we're going to go to our paint room. So I'm going to select paint. It says that I changed my UV. Uh, do I want to apply the changes? Yes, I do. So I'm going to hit OK. And it says it can't be undone. That's fine. OK. All right. Now, I have some smart materials that I can apply here. So I'm going to go to my, uh, where do you go? Smart materials right here. I'm going to select my, um, let's see. Let's see what we got in paints. I kind of want to have painted metal. Let's check this guy, old rust. Yeah, that's not too bad. So with that selected, it's now creating a curvature map. And it's probably going to ask me to, yeah, there we go, to calculate an ambient occlusion layer. Okay. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm just going to have it calculate that. Here we go. And as we do that, it's going to apply it. And you can see it down here. All right. And then we're going to move up our preview window. And let's just move that in front of our barrel and have a look. Well, that doesn't look too great. So we're not going to do that. So I'm going to go with uh, metals. We're going to scroll down here. And we're going to take this guy. And let's preview that. Should be a bit better than that. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on our fill bucket. There you go. That's a better preview. All right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go up to layer. And do I want to fill the entire layer? Yes, I do. So I'm going to hit yes. And there you have it. So get this out of the way. So this is our basic barrel here. It's a bit clean and uh, we don't really want it to be too clean, right? So what we can do is kind of rough that up, if you will. So let's kind of minimize this window here and just get that out of the way for a sec. Okay. So what we can do, we can take some scratches here. I'll just go up and we'll select this guy. And then I'm going to right click and drag to increase that. And I'm going to right click and push up. Okay. And you can see that as I do that, the depth value over here is responding. Now we're going to do a dry run here. So instead of my fill bucket, I'm going to take, a, let's do an airbrush. Right click and increase the size. And let's see if this will do anything for us. We're going to turn on this guy here. Let's see if there's an area where we can see what's going on. Now that's not too great. So we're going to increase the roughness. Still not too much going on. Let's see. Depth should be okay. All right. Well, that's not going to give us what we want. So Let's see what we can do here. Oh, that's better. Okay. You can immediately see that's kind of, you know, carving into our surface here. That's kind of what I wanted. We'll just right click and pull down that depth just a bit. And immediately our effect seems to be gone. So let's just kind of beat this up. Okay. All right, now that's phase one. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to double click on this color here and we're going to change our color to kind of greenish yellow. We've got our airbrush selected. Let's see what that will do. Oh, go to paint. Okay, now that's obviously responding, uh, but it's responding way too much. So we're going to right click and drag that back down. 
Well, let's see if we can kind of mess up our barrel here. Now this is not the yellow, but because we have this normal uh, applied, we can kind of beat up this guy. Okay. All right. Now we're in paints. Uh, I'm going to select this guy and I'm going to select this color. And this should work. Control Z, we're going to turn this off. This is my current color, and we're going to increase the opacity because we can hardly see it. It's only 8%. All right. And now you can see that our yellow is coming up. Okay. So control Z. And what we're going to do is we're going to right click and drag. And we're going to kind of put some paint residue on this guy. Not too much. And just to mix that up, I'm going to double click here and we'll move towards something that is a bit more dark green here. Okay. Well, what we can do is we'll move this towards something that is more red. Somewhere up here. And then we'll bring down the opacity quite a bit. We'll right click and increase our brush size. Yeah, it's just marked like that. Okay. All right. So I can kind of live with this for now. All right. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go to File, Export Objects and Textures. Now I want this to be saved into my barrel folder and I want it to overwrite my original OBJ. So I'm going to select this guy. And I'm going to hit save. Do I want to replace? Yes. Uh, here are some options. TGA setup that I want to use. I want 32 bit for my displacement depth. And I'm going to hit OK. And it's going to export all of these files. OK, we'll give that a sec. And once that's done, I will open up a Marmoset tool bag. And I will see you guys in a sec. All right, guys, we're back. I have Marmoset tool bag opened. Um, I want to change my uh, background to start with, so I'm going to click on Sky. I'm going to go to Presets, and let's find something else that we can use here. Now, I got this called Smash Windows, which, you know, kind of suits my uh, barrel just fine. Okay. And this is the ultimate test whether our UV is going to work out or not. Because if the model is imported correctly here, including um, you know the uh, texture files and so forth, then you know that your model is in order. All right. So first we're going to go to File and Import Model, and not that guy. What's going on? All right, Desktop. Yeah. Our Barrel folder, and we're going to take our Barrel OBJ, and this is our initial test to see if our model looks all right. Okay. Now, everything seems to be there. That's fine. So now we have to pick up the layers that have been created. Now, sometimes that can be tricky because the naming conventions used are not always the same. So you need to kind of figure out what you want to plug in where, all right? So I'm going to start off by creating a new material. And I'm going to go down to my albedo map. And I'm going to click on that. And in my barrel folder, I'm going to go with the color map that has been created, which is this guy. And as I do that, you can see that this material has been created. I can now click and drag and bring over. And you can see that that worked all right. Cool. And then we're going to keep on going. So our normal map, we'll select that. And let's see, where is that going? That's our rough map, emission map, power map, do 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 do. Uh, curvature. Oh, here it is. N M N map, normal map. Okay. So, and as you can see, it immediately 
kind of bumps up the top and puts the dents and so forth in, which is pretty cool. Then we are going to go into our specular map, just like that. And for that one, I'm going to take my emissive map. Okay. And you can see that effect. And what it can do is uh, kind of play with the intensity here, as you can see. I don't want it to be too shiny. After all, it's, uh, you know, beat up. Here's my red cross, which kind of works fine. So let's see what else we've got. We've got a gloss map that we can use. This is a displacement map. I'm not quite sure where the curvature map goes, to be quite honest. So I'm just going to give this a go. It didn't become worse, so I guess that's okay. I'm going to get a lot of comments from people right now saying that I put it in the wrong slot and so forth. But okay, we're going to select the emissive. We're going to go down. We're going to select the emissive here. We're going to select that option. And we're going to go to our emissive power, this guy. Has now been plugged in. And then we're going to go to our occlusion map. Occlusion. Select that one. And where is our AO? That's the first one here. Okay. And without using too many options, I'm kind of happy with this. And again, you know, this is fairly new software for me, so don't beat me up too much. Uh, okay. So that's that. So the next step that we're going to do is I'm going to create a Marmoset viewer and I'm going to plug it into ArtStation and then we can have a look at that right there. So hang on guys while I do that. I'll see you guys in a sec and we can check that out. Okay. All right, guys. Well, um, I started up ArtStation.com. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to create our viewer. So we're going to go to view. We're going to click on viewer export and I'm going to call this... Uh, oil barrel and I'll fill in my name that's all good I'm gonna select the location where I want to save this which is going to be in my barrel folder and we'll call this oil barrel view and we're gonna save that out okay and export there we go okay so now we're going to go to ArtStation, and there we are. And I want to, uh, let's see, upload artwork. There we go. I'll just uh, call this All Barrel, and I want to add a Marmoset viewer. Okay. So I'm going to go up and up and up and up to my desktop and look for a barrel. And here is my oil barrel viewer. I'm going to open. It's loading that up. We'll just give that a second. And I can fill in a lot of other stuff, but I'll do that later. I'll just save that out if it allows me to do that. And publish. So now I can preview this. So let's see what we got. Okay. So I'm going to click on my player and it's going to load up and there you go. There it is. So that's all there's to it. So hopefully you guys like this tutorial and if you have any questions, let me know and I'd help you out if I can. Okay. Thanks. Bye.